can we turn to what is your personal protocol? Uh, so you've been studying aging and and brain health, and so um, what do you what do you do for to to stay healthy and keep your brain healthy? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think, <laughs> luckily, I didn't say anything too crazy before because I think you know, for me, the things I like to try to do are things that the same things that I tell other people and advise them to do, you know? So I think, uh, you know, definitely aerobic, aerobic exercise. So running, swimming as much as I can find the time. Um, and I really think that's important from a general health standpoint for humans. And I think based on all the research and animal models is really, you know, one of the, basically the best thing that you can do and the safest Mm -hmm. thing you can do. You know, it's hard to say, um, exactly how long or how hard you need to run or swim, right? These kinds, they're not pinned down. But definitely Mm -hmm. more is better than none. Some is better than none, I should say. You Mm -hmm. know, there may be a peak of too much, right? People have done studies, marathon runners and things. They have problems with mitochondria or muscles or things like that long term. So, you know, sometimes pushing it too far may have, you know, negative effects downstream. But at least some exercise, moderately strenuous aerobic exercise, I think is really the best thing you can do. You know, I think that's why a lot of people sometimes, right, you know, you get a runner's high or people, you know, who work out or go running in the middle of a work day. Often, you know, they feel like they can think more clearly or they feel, you know, refreshed, revived, you know, a lot of that's endorphins and things like that. Um, But I think there's absolutely some truth to um, exercise being healthy and good for your brain. Mm. Um, The second thing I think is, is definitely um, eating as healthy as you can. Right. Mm. So there's definitely been a lot of studies linking sort of unhealthy foods to various health problems. Um, but also to brain health. And so I think, you know, like people say, eat more fish, right? Less high fatty diets. I know some people like to go, I personally had a brief stint doing, you know, a ketogenic diet, right? Which is basically high fat, you know, moderate protein, no carbs. Um, I personally didn't feel any smarter or like I had better memory. (laughs) Um, So I don't do anything too um, specific diet wise besides, you know, try to be as healthy as I can eat, you know, all things that are good for you, olive oils, fish, fruits, vegetables, um, and less of the unhealthy things, but nothing too crazy there. Um, the other thing, you know, I, I, like I mentioned the, the idea of using your brain and having sort of environmental enrichment, right. Stimulating your brain. I wouldn't say I do anything myself currently that's specifically doing that. You know, I think my, my, my research is, is say, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> outside of my work, you know, I mean, my research is very stimulating and I'm using my brain constantly. I'm learning new things every day um, in the lab and, and with my work. And so I think that's absolutely important and valuable. Um, but I think, you know, as, as we get older, as we retire, staying active and, and, you know, using your brain, having experiences, going out, talking to people, learning new things, those are valuable things, um, you know, once you're sort of less active in the workplace. Um, and the last thing, I guess, like I said, sleep is important, I think, and getting as much good sleep as you can. It's hard, you know, with, with our, when you're working a lot and you're, and you're very busy or if you have family or kids and things like that. Um, but I think getting as much good sleep when you can manage it is uh, important and valuable, you know, as much as you can within, within reason of your responsibilities and everything else, of course. In vitamins, I take vitamins, you know, general, general everyday adult multivitamins, nothing too crazy, no specific um, supplements or these things that have been coming out lately. Um, I've had people ask me about, you know, the NAD supplements and stuff like that. Um, But for me, I'm not, not ready or convinced yet to take anything too extreme. So just sort of very basic, healthy things, staying active. That's, that's all I'm doing yet, but we'll see what happens, you know, as I get older, if I need to do some more serious uh, (laughs) regimen. Right. Well, hopefully we'll know more, you know, I mean, it's a very active field. And so things are moving, Mm. seem to be moving very quickly. Absolutely. Excellent. So thank you so much. Thank you for for your time. So can you tell us where, where we can learn more about uh, what your, your current research is and what's going on in the the lab that you work at? Mm. So you can, so we have our lab, Carl Dysteros lab, we have a website. And it sort of gives a, you know, the Stanford website, if you search, um, and it tells you sort of about what the lab does, the technologies, the techniques, and a little blurb sort of about what people are doing um, in the lab. It doesn't, it's hard to get sort of um, 
the active research and progress, right? Because the way publishing works, you're not, it's hard to tell everyone exactly what you're doing currently before it's close to publishing, right? right. Because there's a lot of people working on similar things. Um, and, and also you really don't want to be um, telling people results and conclusions that you're not absolutely hundred percent sure of yet. Right. So this is a problem sometimes with research and progress or, or preprints or something where you say, Oh, I've discovered this amazing thing. Um, and then as it's getting reviewed at a journal and the editors and the reviewers have comments and they ask you to do other experiments and things like that, then you find out, Oh, it wasn't exactly what I <laughs> thought it was, or, you know, it's something else. So right. it's always a little risky to, to talk about things before you're really sure. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, yep. our lab website absolutely um, gives you an idea of sort of the things that we're doing and the tools and the techniques and technologies. Um, and of course, you know, you can always reach out to me or specifically to talk about if there's something, you know, of interest to talk about. Um, I'm always happy to chat. Okay, excellent. Well, we'll link to that and, and your TED Talk in the, in, in the notes. Great. So, Dr. Ho, thank you very much. And um, yeah, thank you, thank you for joining us. And I, I hope that we get the opportunity to talk again. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. It was really, really great talk. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell button and choose all for any new video release notifications. It encourages us to continue to create more videos about anti-aging and extending healthy lifespan. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well and we'll speak to you again soon. Thank you.